Hi, I'm Garlic with the Urban Herb School. Today we are in the heart of East Vancouver at my community garden. We have lots of folks all around here that are growing really good, healthy food. And today I'm really excited to share with you the SkyTrain and uh, some of the other background noises. This might be our most, uh, our noisiest episode yet. really excited to share with you uh, the wild foods that are growing in the alleys in between some of the community garden plots and along the fence and along the edges because this is where I get really excited about wild food foraging. So the first one we're going to talk about today most of you probably know and have weeded it out of your gardens which is dandelion. Lots of people know about dandelion it's often the first wild food that's introduced to them and uh, it's really, really nutritious. It's packed full of vitamins and minerals, and it is uh, definitely one of the more bitter wild greens that we'll find around. Uh, the, the leaf, the flower, and the root are all edible and medicinal. I think that they're really fantastic, although some people have a harder time because of the bitterness of them. So if you have a hard time with bitter foods and you're having trouble adjusting with that, no fear. We have some other flavors uh, with the plants that I've picked just in the last few minutes. So we have spicy, we have sour, we have more uh, sweet, uh, pungent, and even like a neutral watery kind of flavor. So on the neutral watery front, we have this common thistle. A lot of gardeners are pulling this out, a lot of lawn owners are digging this out and tossing it away, and the root is actually super delicious, especially of the younger plants before it gets woody. It's, it's sweet and watery and fresh. Uh, I would snip these off at the base here, give them a little wash, and then cut them into bite-sized pieces and put them into a stir-fry or even into a salad or something like that, and I think that they're just delicious. The next plant we have, more often known for its medicinal properties than it is for its food properties, we have two different types here. This is plantain. This is the broadleaf plantain or the spoonleaf plantain. And uh, one of its signatures for identification is these lines, these parallel veins going up the back. And then when you pull them apart, you actually get kind of a celery stringiness to it. And that's a dead giveaway that you found the right plant. And that's this, that feature is the same on the lance-leafed plantain, uh, which tends to grow around edges rather than right in the lawn. Looks a bit more like a grass to some people. It's really high in vitamin A and trace minerals like iron, and uh, its flavor is a little bit bitter, it's, uh, but it's mostly sweet to neutral. I really like it. Has a texture, especially the young plants, that's a lot like spinach, and I use it in stir fries or in soups or in salads, uh, pretty much the same as I would spinach or kale. Sometimes they're a little bit tougher and so you want to bruise them like you would a kale before you, you put them into a salad. Next up, we have clover. And we actually have, this is kind of a mess here, we actually have three different kinds of clover. We have a common white clover, which many people are familiar with from searching for four leaf clovers. Good luck with that for all you four-leaf clover hunters. We have a red clover here, which has been used uh, traditionally to help with uh, female uh, hormone balancing, helping the endocrine system, and has actually been used for a really long time in, uh, in remedies to help women to get pregnant. And then the last one is a smaller cousin, has these tiny little yellow flowers, and this is a hops clover. Now all three of them have this very identifiable feature to their leaves. I'm going to work with the red clover leaf because it's a little bit bigger and easier to see. So this is three leaflets that uh, are always together on all three plants. Uh, the red and the white clover tend to have these sort of white triangle lines in there. The red clovers can grow a lot taller. They, I've seen them up to about uh, a foot and a half or two feet tall. The white clover tends to grow in mats on the ground. 
And then the hops clover, it kind of varies between. It's a better climber, like some of the other pea family uh, vines. It's able to climb up the sides of, of fences or walls or things like that. And it also really likes corners. All right, next up, we have a sour delicacy. This is wood sorrel. And it's found often enough in the woods, as you might guess from the title. But we were lucky enough here today to find a very small patch growing uh, over near somebody's plot. And it is a really delicious, unique flavor that you don't find a whole lot in the wild um, because it's really sour. It's very high in vitamin C and, uh, and it's really quite tasty. It's a very delicate plant, uh, but I love to put it in salads. And I've been working on a recipe. I haven't found a patch large enough yet to make this soup, but I found a recipe for a wood sorrel soup. It takes a good sized patch before you can get enough for the whole dish. All right, next up is one of my favorites. And this is mallow. There's a couple of different varieties of mallow that are around. And the flower is one of the easiest ways to identify it. It's got five petals with these really unique lines on them. And then when they close up, uh, people say that uh, when they're starting to go to seed that it looks a bit like a cheese wheel. Uh, these leaves are almost, uh, almost like a maple leaf in their structure where they're doubly toothed around the edge, which means two different size teeth as well as being lobed. It's a very soft plant. Uh, when you feel it, it's really silky. I really like to nibble on small leaves like this or the flowers when I'm out hiking or walking, uh, but I'll also use some of the bigger leaves. I'll cut them up and throw them in a stir fry as any green. Now the flavor of these is just a little bit sweet to neutral. It's a little bit like the violet, if you saw the violet episode, where it has a really demulcent sort of uh, texture to it, where it, it makes your mouth a little bit slippery. And uh, I really like that because it's very moistening and very soothing to the, to the body. And I just think it's magnificently beautiful, so I love to eat them. All right, the last one up today, you will find all over the place in back alleys and as a common weed that people are pulling out of their garden all over the place. This is fennel. And this has a flavor that's it's really sweet, uh, even to pungent uh, right off the bat. It's, it's just a big burst of flavor. And it's growing all over the place. The one growing in back alleys and around that's kind of considered a weed, it doesn't grow the big bulb that a lot of people understand as a vegetable but the leaves are still edible and the seeds are still really nice for tea. And they have pretty much the same medicine as, uh, as fennel seeds that you'd find in a health food store. So there you have seven new plants to introduce into your diet. They're wild, they're abundant, they're easy to find, they're nutritious, and best of all, they're delicious. To find out more information about urban foraging, about herbal medicine, visit my website, urbanherbschool.ca. And please send me your stories, let me know how you're using wild foods, share your recipes with me, and let's keep this dialogue of healthy, happy communities growing.